In this video, I'm going to be going over trend lines. And this is actually, if I were to pick any retail concept I could use for the rest of my life, even though I do not use retail anymore because it's so, so bad, it would actually just be trend lines. So I've already gone over like patterns. And when we type in stock patterns, you're all you're going to see a very common theme in every single one of these pictures. They all have some sort of black line or some sort of trend line, trend line. Okay, whether it be a channel, whether it be an ascending triangle, whether it be a descending triangle, they're all going to have some trend line. Now, they always have two to each side, but here's the thing. Trend lines that I use are always one singular trend line, and what it represents is a very algorithmic kind of signature that tells us we're going to break it. So what do I mean by that? Now, what's a trend line? So the best trend lines you'll ever draw is just going to be a straight line. And it's typically a spot where instead of instead of uh, it being a horizontal line, it's going to be a diagonal line. And it's going to be a spot where price touches like 50 times. So see how price touches it here, 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 here again. See how price touches it so much and then finally price ends up breaking here. That's what a trend line is. It's just basically a diagonal point of price where the market touches it a lot. Okay. Now you're probably wondering, well, will this be a trend line here? This would also be a trend line here, but it would actually not make sense to take this trend line to the downside if it broke. Okay. This is where the science of ICT and liquidity come into play, which I'm going to probably have to explain again, but look at this. So if we go here, um, let's see if I can find the pattern right here. Okay, if we go here, look at this. This is a falling wedge, this pattern right here. Okay, you can clearly see it's a falling wedge. Why do we go up and not down here? Okay, if you want to take a second to pause the video and tell me why, like, why if we did break below this, why it wouldn't be good short. If you want to just take a second, based off liquidity and based off of stop losses. Remember I explained in the stop loss video. Why would it make more sense to go up here rather than down? Or in other words, why does an why does a falling wedge go up? So if you pause the video, the answer is this. It's because we've already ran or we've already triggered all the people placing their stop loss below this low. So the market does not want to keep going down if that's the case. Now, have we triggered any of these stop losses above this high, above this high, above this high? Nope. They're all just sitting there, right? Imagine someone just stop loss sitting here, stop loss sitting here. They're all, they never, none of them are ran, okay? So that's why like a falling wedge works the way it does because these stop losses at these lows have already been ran, okay? So that's why we don't draw a trend line like this because this just, it doesn't make sense. I mean, yeah, maybe it's like a trend line. We could bounce her and you can take the bounce off it, but it doesn't make sense to break it. Okay, so you can use trend lines in many different ways um but again the way that i use them is i wait for breaks now another way you could use them is this okay so what you could do is you could be like oh price has rejected here three times so what i'm gonna gonna do i'm gonna go i'm gonna short it the next time we hit it oh we hit it i'm gonna try a short boom let's go short there i'm gonna cover there so that's another way people use trend lines but there's a huge, huge issue with this. Okay, this is completely gambling because here's the thing. You're basically shorting where everyone else is shorting. Why do 90% of people fail? Because of this. You're shorting where every single person is shorting. How many people do you think are shorting up here? Probably a lot. Now, let's go back to the method of, let's go back to the idea of stop losses. If you saw, if you saw a resistance line, such as here, and we're shorting that resistance, where would you put your stop loss? As I explained, you put it above. You put it above the resistance because you don't think that, okay, if price is bearish, we should just keep going down. We should not go above that line. So where do you put it? You put it above, and I know if I get stopped out, we're probably bound to go higher. It's the same thing with the trend line. You treat this like resistance. People put their stop loss above the line. And yes, it keeps moving down, so people keep making their stop loss lower and lower as we keep going down. So what does that mean? If we know the market 
algorithm is made to target stop losses because that's what the algorithm does. It targets stop losses. Then why in the hell would you short a trend line? Because at any point in time, we're going to break and just run this and wreck everyone, but you don't know when. So why would you gamble and keep shorting a trend line when you know that that one time you short could be the time you get wrecked? And that's why when I play trend line, I never actually short the trend line. I always wait for the breakout. I, I'm a, I like the breakout. And again, I really I haven't really gone over the definition of a breakout trader, but all a breakout trader is is let's say price is like really holding a level, okay? So we've held it 50 times and then we finally break a level really big. What a breakout trader is going to do is they're going to take that breakout and short after we break a level that's been holding a long time. So, it's the same idea with a trend line. I wait for the breakout and I kind of see okay, once we break out, I'm going to long because I know there's a bunch of stop losses resting here, 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 and here. And that's where the market actually targets. So that's really important to understand. If you don't understand that, you're not you're not going to be successful because you need to you need to get in the algorithm's mind and think about, okay, where might liquidity be engineering or where might liquidity be resting and where might people be placing their stop losses? And you need to know that in order to be a successful trader. And when you think of a trend line, the reason why I love trend lines so much and why it would be my one thing I would pick to trade if I could only trade in retail concept the rest of my life is because when we break out of a trend line that's really algorithmic, it's, and, and keep in mind, why is this so algorithmic? Well, look how perfectly we touched it. We touch it here, we touch it here, and see how the wick goes above it, but the body doesn't? That's actually a really bullet. That's a really bearish signature. So I know when we break it and the body does close above, it's probably going to be a better play. But again, you can clearly see. Sorry, I didn't mean the yawn. You can clearly see why it's so good and why I always wait for the breakout because we could have broke out here. I just. I, did, I wouldn't have known that. We could have broke out here. We could have broke out here. Like, you will see a trend line. You will see a million trend lines. And other trend lines, we will break out here. You will get wrecked. Other trend lines will break out here. And people who are in there will get wrecked. You just never know. But once we do have that breakout, it can only go in one direction. And that's up or down because that's where all the stop losses are resting. So, to me, trend lines aren't bad for that reason. Now, why would you? Why, you're probably like, well, why don't you just use trend lines then? Well, look. Imagine if you could get in here before the trend line breakout, knowing that there is a fair rally gap here, and you could get a really, really precise entry right here instead, right? Wouldn't you want the more precise entry inside of a fair rally gap and get in before the trend line breaks for a better entry? I mean, I would. So that's why I use fair rally gaps, and that's why we still use smart money concepts because. You can tell that this trend line is going to break way before it does. Meanwhile, new retail traders, they don't know when it's going to break. They're just kind of waiting. But with ICT and fair value gaps, you can actually see when this is going to break without um, without stressing yourself out too much and just waiting for the breakout. So that's why we do not just use trend lines. And uh, again, I will draw these on my chart sometimes, but Typically, I label them as something else called low resistance liquidity or LRLR, and you'll hear that term in a later video. But that's what I classify trend line as. Now, trend lines should be drawn very, very algorithmically. The number one mistake I noticed with a trend line is people draw horrible, horrible trend lines. They'll literally draw this, and they'll be like, oh, trend line right here. Let's go. You got two touches. Look how much the market just disrespects that line right there. I wonder why. Because this is not a trend. This is not algorithmic. This is just a spot where price just comes up twice. It's not like we tap it three times and it's just super well respected. I mean, here's the thing. I wouldn't draw the trend line here. I would not draw that. That's not algorithmic. What is algorithmic? Algorithmic is if we touch it. So like here, okay, there's where I draw the trend line because I now see, okay, the market has touched this four times, meaning there's probably a lot of stop losses over it. Now I'm going to draw it. I'm not going to draw it here. I'm not going to draw it here, right? A lot of people, that's the one thing where they go wrong with trend lines. They just, they draw it way too early and it's not even a valid trend line, okay? And you can see if you did draw this, which is not a trend line, 
it's just not respected because it's not algorithmic. The market truly isn't respecting it. Okay, so it has to be an algorithmic trend line. That's the one thing I notice is bad. So look at this. Look how algorithmic this is. Now you're probably wondering, when would I draw this trend line? Would I draw it here? I would not draw it here. No, that's not enough. Let's see. I would draw it probably right here. This is where I draw it. This is where I draw the trend line. And remember, all these new retail traders learning trend lines on YouTube, they're going to be like, oh, we're going to bounce here. It's a support line. And they're going to take this long. And it's going to work. And they're going to be like, oh, that was awesome. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. That was awesome. Oh, I just got destroyed. And they get destroyed. And that's why you don't buy off trend lines. And that's why you don't sell off trend lines. All right. What I wait for is when this trend line's built up, I wait for us to break for it, break through it. Because again, if we know the market targets these stop losses that these people are placing, then where do people have their stop losses? Well, they're going to have them blow this, these lows. Because why? Because so many people think, oh, there's a trend line. We're going to bounce off it. It's support. Let's go. And and they're going to get wrecked because we're going to, the market targets stop losses. If the market didn't target stop losses, then yeah, trend lines would be great buy or sell, but it does. And trend lines build up stop losses. So that's just that's just how the market works and that's what you have to understand, all right? Um so again, I'll draw a few more, I guess. So this one will be super algorithmic. Look at this. Look how clean this is. Look how many touches in form of a really nice trend line that form here. This is just so good. Other than that, I don't really see too much. I mean, this is okay. I guess that's okay. It's not perfect. Um, this is like, some people ask me about this. This is just way too steep. It can't be like steep. It has to be like generally like this. This slope is like the perfect slope. It's like almost a 45 degree angle where you'll get the trend line. But this is sometimes, this is just too steep. Again, you'll be able to tell if it's really algorithmic. Um, let's see if I can find another good example here. See, this is not a trend line. This is not algorithmic. There's literally only two touches here, so I would not use this one. Um, this one isn't bad. So that one isn't bad, but not the cleanest. Do do do. Okay, this one's pretty good right here. See this one? See how like, so I would not draw it here. That's not algorithmic enough for me. I'd probably draw it like right here. That's where I draw it. I'd be like, okay, we got a lot of liquidity forming here. A lot of stop losses resting above these highs now. Now I draw the trend line. And now I'd expect bullish prices because we had that trend line. So a lot of people are, like I said, the newer traders who are not learning from me or who learn from other people on YouTube, they short this. They short this trend line because they see it as act as support. They see it act as resistance. Why? Because they're like, oh, well, if it rejected here, it rejected here, rejected here. Well, it's going to reject here. But no, that's not the case. That's how you become liquidity and that's how you fail trading. All right. Now, remember what I said about support and resistance. Support often can turn into resistance and resistance can often turn into support. So a lot of times you'll see stuff like this happen where a support line or a resistance line um, will be resistance at first, but then it'll be support if we break over it. Same thing with trend lines. This was resistance and it becomes support when we kind of close above it with good momentum. And again, do I need a trend line to tell me that? No. Because look what's here. It's a fair value gap. I can just get in on the fair value gap without the line here. Okay, so again, it's a good foundation to 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 start with. But I can literally just get in here out the fair value gap. You do not need this trend line. So um, again, that's a little bit about trend lines. Again, uh, probably the only thing that I would even maybe even draw on your chart. Again, I do not draw trend lines on my chart, but I think they're... If I had to pick only one concept to use the rest of my life that was retail only, it would be trend lines. So that's it for this video. Let me know if you guys have any questions. And uh, next video, we'll be going over the supply, supply and demand and the strap. Okay, so that'll be a fun video. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys later. Peace.